AI cameras and sports videography are a weird mix. On one hand, these new cameras are super convenient and allow access to features we've never had before. But on the other hand, they are designed to replace sports videographers like us. So why am I making a second video about this AI camera then? Well, because I somehow made my way inside the camera and finally retrieved the soccer game I filmed over two weeks ago. So let's see once and for all how good this footage actually is. All right, so here we are again talking about AI cameras, but this time I do have the footage from uh, this camera right here, which I will show you in a minute. But before we do that, um, if you haven't watched my previous video about the VO Cam 2, I strongly suggest that you start by doing that because it is a great video if I do say so myself, but uh, also because it will give context to this one. Also, I just want to be clear before I get sued by VO that I did not recover the footage by physically opening the camera and somehow connecting it to my computer. I actually have been uh, emailing back and forth with uh, who I can only assume is the worst support technician at VO because uh, we've been talking for 12 days. He asked me for the serial number of the camera because I specifically told him at the start um, that the issue was that the camera, which is a loan from VO, was still connected to the previous user or previous club. And for that reason, it wouldn't allow me to connect my account or my club to, to the camera. And then he proceeded in asking me if, uh, like, once he entered the serial number, he was like, is this your club? And I'm like, no, it's some German thing I've never heard of. That's not me. Well, can you please register the camera to the right club? And I'm like, I can't do anything at my end. You have to. Anyway, we went back and forth for, for, for several emails like that until he somehow got replaced by another technician that like took his spot in the conversation. Once I explained to her what I said to the guy at the beginning, then boom, everything was just done and I could finally connect to the camera and retrieve my footage. Which to me, it's insane that someone who works there full time as a support technician wasn't able to figure out something that I, as someone who didn't even know three weeks ago that this camera existed, I was able to figure that out by myself like pretty quickly. Anyway, that's neither here or there, I digress. Here we are, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's watch the footage together so I can then give you my take on the AI tracking abilities and the image quality. Let's go to the videotape. Here we go. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I am actually impressed. Um, my expectations were quite low, but like this is like 
way exceeding what I thought it would be. Um, obviously not to the level of a decent mirrorless camera, for example, but still better than I thought. Because I'll be honest, like uh, what I've seen online so far from other users didn't look nearly as good as what I saw on my VO Cam 2. But there are reasons for that though. The first one is the fact that I was shooting in perfect weather conditions. The sun was bright and there was no shady spots on the field at all. Plus, I was on the right side of the field. Because if I'd been on the other side, I would have been facing the sun and the automatic settings would have been all over the place, going back and forth between the sky being overexposed and the players being underexposed. So if you have an AI camera like this yourself and you want to maximize the results, obviously you can't control the weather, but at least make sure that the sun is always behind you. There are other factors affecting the image quality that we don't really have any control over, like the resolution, the bitrate, all that stuff. And by downloading the game, I was able to see the actual specs of the file and understand a bit better what goes on during the processing of the video. Which, by the way, takes a considerable amount of time because I uploaded my uh, game footage at about 11 p.m. last night before going to bed and I got an email notification letting me know that the video was ready at like 10 to 7 this morning. So I'm not too sure exactly what happens when you're live streaming because if all the processing is actually done live in camera, then what the hell was happening during those seven plus hours that I was waiting for my video file? I'm actually confused by that part because VO is actively promoting the fact that now in this second generation camera, all the processing is done in camera and not online. Until today, all the magic has happened in the cloud after you upload your match. But now the magic happens inside the camera. The new VO Cam 2 processes recordings instantly. Once the processing is done, the file that you download to your computer is actually a 1080p file, even though the cameras are advertised as 4K cameras. So what I think happens is that those two 4K cameras are sort of merged together to form one big panoramic shot of the field, which you can actually see on the VO online platform. And what the AI does is basically zoom in and out of that image to follow the action. Kind of similar to what we do when we film in 4K but edit in 1080p so we can zoom in and post and not lose any quality. But in this case, however, when the camera shot is at its widest to film the action nearby, the image quality is actually quite good. But when it's trying to zoom into something at the other end of the field, you can clearly see a difference. So my advice to users would be to make sure your camera is always as close to the sideline as possible because I can only assume that if your camera is 30 or 40 yards away, um, it will always zoom in at least a little and therefore never be at its full quality potential. It's also important to know that most budget mirrorless cameras, like the Sony ZV-10 for example, shoot at a bit rate anywhere between 60 and 100 megabits per second, depending on the settings that you choose. But with the VO Cam 2, the bit rate of the exported video is only 8 megabits per second. Which is another reason why the image quality is nowhere near the level of a mirrorless camera. The tracking itself for me worked pretty well as far as I can tell. I mean, there are a few jerky camera movements here and there, but nothing too crazy. Overall, I was quite happy with that. However, since I posted my previous video, I heard crazy horror stories about AI cameras missing goals uh, for various reasons. I heard something about, um, you know, the camera focusing on the main group or players while someone is on a breakaway or also even the AI camera confusing a bald head with the actual ball. So yeah, it's hit and miss, I guess. But one thing I'm really not impressed with is the fact that the VO watermark is embedded at the bottom right of every exported video. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to export a clean video without it, which I think is ridiculous. Imposed watermarks are something you see on free platforms, not expensive ones like this. 
And speaking of money, I do need to apologize because I made a mistake in my previous video when I was talking about prices. Because you see, I live in Australia and typically I always use a VPN to make sure I give you guys uh, US dollar prices. But I forgot last time and I gave you Australian dollar prices. But I had a look um, just before I started recording. And uh, it's, it's interesting because... If, you, if you're in the U.S., obviously the, the, the prices for the, the physical products like the camera and the tripods, it's lower. Like, well, it's, it's the same price, but because it's U.S. dollar, it's lower. But the subscription and the subscription add-ons like the analytic package and all that, those are the same exact price. So, for example, if you get the cheapest subscription in Australia, it's $99 Australian. But the cheapest subscription in the U.S. is also $99 U.S. So technically, you're paying more money for a subscription in America than you would in Australia. No idea why. Ultimately, my conclusion is still the same as it was in the previous video, even though I really like the image quality. Um, I still don't think that this is a tool for sports videographers, mainly because of the subscription model and the fact that it takes a very long time to access your footage, even if you don't have the same issues that I had um, with the camera not connecting to my account, just the, the processing and the waiting period and all that, that we're talking hours. Like I said, it took me seven hours. So yeah, I don't think, I can think of many situations uh, where I was filming a game and seven hours would have been way too much. So not for me. However, I do think that this is an amazing tool for clubs and coaches who can't really afford a videographer but still need to be recording every game for coaching and uh, recruiting video purposes. So anyway, I'm gonna wait until AI cameras get a substantial upgrade before I make a third video on the topic. But in the meantime, make sure you watch the rest of my filming tips playlist for more videos like this one.